All right, welcome back. Uh, so we're gonna learn about drive motors. The way these motors work is you, you create an object um, called either a large motor or a medium motor. Um, when you create that object, uh, it's got instance variables, uh, so things that it knows, uh, and then it's also got methods, so things you can make it do. Turns out that both the large motor and the medium motor are, are subclasses of the EV3.motor. So they actually work the same, they've got the same API. It also turns out that for the driving, they're both large motors, right? So I just tell you about the medium motor because later when we use the arm, uh, there's a medium motor on top here. Uh, so let's go ahead and start by, by kind of looking at how do you learn this? Um, and one of the best ways to learn is to read the, the like official docs. So I didn't make this library, it's not mine, somebody else made EV3Dev. Um, and you can read their documentation. So that they're, they've got Python bindings. So if you click on this link, it'll take you to their, their Python bindings. And this page will tell you about how do you use uh, Python with EV3Dev. Turns out the only useful thing on this page is actually the, uh, the API reference at the bottom. Uh, so I guess you could have uh, clicked on API reference and you could have gone into this page if you wanted. Uh, make a bookmark uh, in Chrome to this. Just, just do it right now, make a bookmark real quick. Um, and this is where you see the information. So like what we're going to talk about today is, is the motor classes, right? Um, and so the motor classes have information in here with their API. I find APIs kind of hard to read. I, I like to learn with tutorials, which is what I'm making for you. Uh, but the API is a great reference because like all of the details uh, are in the API. Um, it's just a little hard to use when you're getting started. Uh, to make your life easier, um, I've got this video lecture so you can learn the API. I've also made these one page summary things. Uh, so this is the one page summary for drive motors. My recommendation is that you've got this one page summary like printed out sitting next to you while you're watching this video. So if you don't have it right now, uh, you know, use the link above the video to, to print it out. And so this is kind of the summary of what I'm about to tell you, right? Uh, so hopefully with that link, the one page summaries in this lecture, you'll feel really comfortable with drive motors uh, whenever you're ready to start doing it on your own. Uh, so let's start by just kind of looking at an example, see what these things look like. Uh, so I've got kind of the UML diagram over here as a reference. Uh, I've got some example code here. So the first thing you do is you have to import uh, the EV3 library. The way we typically do that is ev3dev.ev3 as ev3. That way you can only type ev3. Uh, that's all you really need to type. We import the time library just because we're going to use time.sleep here in a minute. Um, and then we go ahead and make our two motor objects. When you construct a motor object, you have to say what port it's on. Uh, our left motor is on uh, output B. Our, our right motor is on output C. It just tells them where they're connected, right? Uh, once you've constructed the object, uh, it now has all these instance variables and it's got all these methods. In the example here, we're calling the method run forever. Uh, run forever, as you can probably guess, it just makes the motor start running with no definite end time. When you call this run forever, uh, you can do things like you can set the speed. Um, the way this parameter works is a little different uh, than the way we've used parameters before. Normally we'd just say like 500, uh, but this one says speed SP equals 500. Um, and that's, uh, that's a thing called a name parameter. Um, and in this case, what it is, is they're using keyword arguments. So you can specify different things. Uh, and we're gonna dive into that really deeply here in a few minutes, but I'm just gonna kind of gloss over now. It sets the speed. Uh, the units on the speed are degrees per second. So they have no idea how your, how your wheels are connected. So the units are not inches per second. The units are degrees, like this motor turning. How fast does this motor turn? So it's going at 500 degrees uh, per second. So a little over a lap, a little bit less than two laps. Uh, speeds on our robot, roughly, um, you know, 100 is very, very slow. 400 is about normal. 600 is fast and 800 is max. Um, if you put in a number bigger than 800, it still runs at the max of 800. Sometimes I intentionally put in 900 uh, just because that guarantees it's going as fast as it can, right? So it's doing everything it can. So we started the left motor um, and we started the right motor. And then we're using a time dot sleep for five seconds. So just kind of wait for five seconds. So the motor's going to go for five seconds. It's a blocking statement. And then the motor stop at the end of five seconds. Pretty simple program. Uh, you can see that we use two methods. We used run forever uh, and we use stop. Uh, and we also use the constructor, right? Let's go and talk about all the methods. Uh, so just kind of like diving into this UML diagram a little bit. 
uh, run forever. You've seen it. It makes the motors run. Uh, whenever you call it, you can set the speed to negative 900 uh, up to 900. That's the range. It determines how fast you go. Stop makes you stop. Uh, run to ABS position is the next one I want to talk about. Uh, this is absolute position. Uh, it turns out the robot always tracks uh, where it's at. So if you say like, I don't know, spin 720 degrees, so it spins 720. And then you say, hey, go back to negative 360. Well, it'll do three laps to get back there. Um, and then you say, hey, go to zero. It'll go right back to where it started. So it's an absolute position. Um, it's neat, but it turns out not to be that useful. Um, the relative position is actually more useful. Uh, so with relative position, you can say, hey, from wherever I'm at now, uh, go you know 360 degrees forwards, um, which will correspond to some distance. That one turns out is really useful. And what it really does is it, it starts the motors turning. You can give it a speed. Um, and it schedules a stop event. So it's going to start the motor's turning. It's going to schedule the stop event whenever that condition is met. Run timed uh, is a little less useful. It says, hey, just run for three seconds. It turns out that if you're going to do a timed run, you may as well just use run forever uh, and then a time delay and then a stop. Um, the other command um, is the wait while command. This one is uh, very useful, actually. Um, so these commands, the way they all work, is they're a line of code that executes. Um, they, they run instantly, and then the very next instant, the next line of code runs. Code runs faster than robots move, right? So if you say, hey, run to a relative position of, of 720 degrees, it's going to take a while for that to happen, but your code's going to keep right on chugging, right? Um, and what this wait while does is it lets your code kind of block, so your code blocks um, until your robot actually finishes the thing then your code keeps going. So wait while turns out to be very useful. I'll talk more about that here with some examples. The instance variables. So we've got this UML thing. We've got four instance variables here. Uh, position, uh, SP, I think it stands for scaled or something like that. Um, the degree or the units are in degrees. Um, and this is a target position. Um, you really only use this with the commands run to ABS position and run to rel position. Um, it's you're setting the target uh, that you're trying to go to. Speed, speed is useful in all the drive commands other than stop, um, and it determines how fast you go. Uh, positives go forwards, negatives go backwards. Um, technically, the run twos, um, the sign is ignored because the direction is determined by the, the position you're trying to get to. If you're trying to go forwards, it goes forwards, even if you say negative in the speed. Stop action, stop action is really not that important. I tell you about it just because it's in there. Um, but when a motor stops, it can either like be running and then you can just remove power and it kind of coasts to a stop. Um, or you can make it break, um, just like stop instantly. Uh, there's also one called hold, where if you try to push it off, it tries to hold its spot there. Turns out, doesn't matter. Um, the default is something. I don't even know what the default is. I use coast uh, more often than not. Uh, but usually it doesn't matter. But it's an instance variable you can set. Usually the default is fine. Uh, time SP. I think it's funny they added the SP on here because because I don't know if it needs to be scaled, but um, this one is useful for the the run time command, um, and it specifies how many milliseconds to run for. It's kind of funny that you're specifying milliseconds here because the time dot sleep is in seconds. So just be careful if you use those two approaches. One is in seconds, the other is in milliseconds. So just kind of be aware of that. Uh, let's talk about this uh, keyword arguments thing, this um, calling a method and, and passing in arguments with names. Um, and so let's look at two examples. So this top example works the way you, you typically work with objects. Um, so you're constructing an object uh, called left motor of type large motor. Um, it's got instance variables, and you can set those. So you can say dot speed equals 500. So you're just setting the speed for this motor. Uh, dot time SP, so you're setting the... Um, the time at which it's going to stop when it runs. Stop action. So here we want it to break. So we want it to immediately stop. And then we call the method run timed. That is completely valid. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but it turns out you can write your code a little bit more readable um, if you pass those in to the method call, which is kind of sneaky. So here's the exact same code, uh, run timed, where you pass in a speed, a time, and a stop action into the method. This works because of the quargs, uh, keyword arguments. So we've specified uh, this keyword argument, this keyword argument, this keyword argument. All it does is it sets those instance variable, then it calls the method. Really simple, but it makes your code a little bit more readable because really that instance variable kind of goes with the method, right? 
So it's important to kind of know how that keyword arguments work because pretty much you'll only use the shorthand. You'll really never write with this top approach. Uh, to make sure you've got a better idea of um, what keyword arguments are typically used with each method, I've made a table for you here. What I want you to do is I want you to think uh, about this table one row at a time. Uh, so think about this top row. If you call run forever, um, you can specify any keyword arguments you want, but some of them are, are basically required, right? Like they're required or at least recommended or regularly used. Um, some are optional, and you can set them if you want. Um, and some are really kind of meaningless for that command. Uh, so let's do the top one together. So uh, this top one, uh, run forever. Um, the only thing that's important is the speed, right? You don't set a target position. You don't set a stop action. You could. There's nothing wrong with setting a stop action, but it doesn't do anything because it's running. Um, and you don't set a time. Um, think about stop for a minute. So with stop, uh, the only one that matters at all is stop action. Sorry, my rows are a little longer. Um, so the stop action, um, you could specify it with stop if you wanted. You don't have to. I usually don't because the, the default usually works out. Run to absolute position. This is the first one that's like meaningful. Um, and so think about this one for a minute. So which ones would you probably pass in uh, to this command? Uh, so this one you should really pass in a position uh, because you're going to have a target for it stops. The speed is regularly used. Um, if you're if you're doing a lot of them in a row and you're not changing the speed, the instance variable will stay set, right? There's nothing wrong. You don't have to set it every time. Uh, stop action usually I don't set, and time doesn't really make any sense. Run to rel position is the exact same. Uh, so it's um, you need to set a target position. You need to set a target speed. Uh, what about run timed? What would you do with run timed? Uh, so with run timed, uh, the position doesn't make any sense, uh, but the speed uh, is is you know used. Um, it's recommended. It's not always required. Stop action, eh, never really care that much about it. And then time SP is used here. So those are kind of what you would expect to pass in uh, to those methods. Uh, another thing I wanted to kind of harp on a little bit is this whole blocking of code execution or not. Uh, so there's kind of two options here that, that do things. The top one has a run forever, uh, which of course runs and finishes instantly. And then it hits this time.sleep and time.sleep is blocking, right? So nothing happens. And then your robot stops and you're, so your code and your robot kind of stay in line. This next one is a disaster. And I want you to see that it's a disaster. Um, and so what's happening here is they make the left motor. Uh, they call runtime. Runtime makes the robot start moving um, and it schedules a future stop, right? And this future stop is going to happen in three seconds. So in three seconds, we're going to stop. Code keeps right on going, though. Um, so the code marches to the next line, and it calls left motor stop. So the robot stops right away. And so if you were actually to run this code, it would it would literally, you would call it, and the, the robot might go, eh, because it would stop instantly when the code hits the next line. So just kind of be aware uh, of how it works, that, that this option two thing doesn't, doesn't work, right? To fix that problem, we have the wait while function. The wait while function, the way it works is the motor always has a state. Uh, the state is a, a, a list, actually, um, of running, ramping, holding, overloaded, and installed. So if you're trying to make a motor go, um, it will add to its list of states running. Um, it will also add ramping, because like you don't start at full speed. You have to kind of like ramp up to that speed. Um, once it's at full speed, Ramping will go away and running will still be there. Um, if you try to run it at 900, but it can only go so fast, it'll put in overloaded, meaning it's trying to get to something, but it can't really get there. So you'll be running and overloaded. Um, and if you stop the motor, like you just grab it with your hand, um, it'll have running and stalled, right? So it'll try to be running, but really it's stalled. The only one we care about is running. Um, so the way we use wait while is we wait while um, the motor state is running. So this command right here blocks your code execution, um, and then your robot and your code kind of stay in line better. So here's just kind of an example of using it. Uh, so we say run to a relative position. So do 10 laps for me of the motor. Um, and then we beep and we beep again. Those beeps are going to happen while the robot's moving. Um, it's also neat to look at this beep command. It's pretty simple. ev 3 soundbeep We just kind of sneak this in on this unit. Um, dot wait, um, 
blocks code execution until the beep finishes because the beep still takes some time, right? Um, and so if I had took off this dot wait, what would happen is it would go beep and there'd be two beeps playing at the same time. With the dot wait, it'll go beep, 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 beep while it running, hits this line. Uh, this line kind of stops code execution until it's done running. And then this last beep is once the robot has stopped, right? So that's kind of the idea of um, controlling your code execution. In the end, you end up with two patterns. Uh, sometimes you use run forever, time.sleep, and then stop. Uh, and that obviously works for, for controlling the flow of your code. The other pattern is you use one of the like more advanced uh, motor commands, but you typically put in a wait while, um, and then you uh, do something after the robot's finished. You could simultaneously do things, that's fine. Um, just kind of be aware that you don't, you, you have to like think about it uh, to keep your, your code in, in, um, in lockstep. Uh, so that's the API. Uh, this is the, uh, the UML over here. Uh, once you get really good uh, at understanding the things I've said, uh, hopefully the, the one page summary uh, is really all you need to kind of like keep all this stuff fresh in your head. All right, so that's it for this video. Uh, come back next time and we'll talk about the modules uh, specific in this unit. See you then. Bye. Mm -hmm.